the first Sebastian ends on a high. Jeremy goes low. Yeah. I go high. Brett goes low. And Kent just right in the middle. effed up the rotation. I don't know what happened there. Hey everyone, welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. We're at episode 732. This is being recorded on July 19, 2023. I'm Sebastian Peek. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. I'm Brett Van Sprenberg. And I'm Kent Burgess. Anyway. If you would like to help support PC Perspective and this podcast, go to patreon.com slash PCPer and become a PC Per podcast patron. That would be delightful. Let's go to Laramie, Wyoming and visit with Josh and talk about food. Hey, is it time for my close up, Mr. DeMille? Mm, well, you know, I've, I've got to get this up because it's kind of unique. This one's called the Cadillac, and I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe it's the Cadillac of burgers. Could be. But the Cadillac is comprised of a double patty topped with bacon, fried pickle chips, peanut butter, and raspberry pepper jelly. The Mm -hmm. presentation was not fantastic, but the flavor was. It had everything you wanted. The red stuff is now. Yeah, pepper jelly. Raspberry pepper jelly. You know, mm-hmm. at first I, 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 I too was not a fan of peanut butter on burgers, but as I have further expanded my culinary horizons, uh, I have really come to appreciate the the sweetness and 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 the nuttiness of peanut butter when, when you combine it with, with meat. Like a burger that's well seasoned and and seared, it just just brings it all together. And you add all those other things, like you know the pickle chips. Ah, great amount of of, of, of acid and, and sweet, and some sour in there, and then just that creaminess and the beef flavor. It was great. So yeah, it's going to be here for the next two weeks. So if you're in town, go to Born in a Barn and get the Cadillac. Let's move on to news. And uh, last week we reported, I guess prematurely, on the demise of the next unit of computing. Because while Serve the Home got a nice scoop and had the story about how Intel was getting out of that business. uh, And they are. And they are, but they they hadn't released the the PR yet. They're actually selling it to Asus. I assume they're selling it. They agreed to terms. Mm -hmm. And Asus is taking over. Secret terms. Now it's a new business unit called Asus NUCBU. So that's Nukbu or Nukbu or Nukbau. Who knows? I'm going to ask JJ uh, next time I see him. Yep. Please tell me how you pronounce this. This is Nukbuk. What matters is Asus is going to be manufacturing, selling, and supporting the 10th and 13th gen systems that are already out there. And they'll be developing future systems as well. So on to the 14th Mm -hmm. gen and whatever else comes down the pipeline, there will be next unit of compute hardware. It's not over. I think we should develop a chart of promising technologies that Intel sells to someone else. Yeah. Look at Solidime. (laughs) We could go back to uh, modems. No, wait. Modems. Who did they sell that to? They had had Uh, that for a while. Don't go to Qualcomm. yeah, it's oh, like no. Apple Qualcomm, something like yeah, that. They were Apple fighting with Qualcomm and SK Hynix. And then they got pissy and went to Apple. Yep. If yep. I recall correctly. So, I wonder how many more of these businesses they will divest themselves of as they attempt to uh, weather some tough times. Let's continue with the, yeah, uh, the horrible uh, stormy riches. analogy. They're riding the ship. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yes. Weathering the storm. Bailing. You can also read about this story in the companion news post, or I would say the competing news post from Jeremy, who decided uh, Asus nabs the nook, which is better. It's a better title than mine was. So. It's, a, it's a slightly alliterative. And mm-hmm. I, I love that I found a picture that had like a whole bunch of the old nook systems on it from like the extreme straight down to like the small little guys. This just illustrates once again how ridiculous that extreme was. 
Oh, it yes. was. It's just a book. It's just a PC. Like, uh, why? How is this the next unit of computing? It's just got a standard video card and, you know, regular desktop processor in it. At what point is that just a computer? It's not the next unit of anything. Come on. <clears throat> hey, as a uh, as a funny sort of uh, media inside baseball story, and that piss picture reminded me of the one that it actually occurred on. We've actually gotten cease and desist. Uh, orders from people who said that we've misappropriated images of like like that before when it's really under those images are generally put out there as fair use for reporting on the system or the thing depicted yeah but it's funny i've collected several of those over the years is is like you owe us many thousands of dollars for the use of that image and i'm like yeah i don't think so go away (laughs) no go ahead and uh, make sure not to grab it from uh questionable sources like amazon has an amazing amount of pictures and I mean, seriously, guys. <laughs> yeah, well, Another there's a lot of less product you're selling. There's a lot of less scrupulous, uh, you know, individuals well, that course. probably are fair game for that sort of thing. But as a media organization, you're generally allowed a little yeah. bit more yeah. latitude about reporting on the thing being depicted yeah. in the image. But yeah, if you didn't realize from behind the scenes, there is literally an entire business of people who just try and get copyright violations that that's literally how they make business Mm -hmm. and you get to deal with them all the time and you know they keep changing the email address when you block them forget about the intel powered mini pcs b link has one called the gtr7 which puts zen 4 into a tiny dare i say next unit of compute like package Hmm. isn't that the name of a 1980s super group uh, <laughs> GTR yes. seven, GTR, GTR. Was, uh, Steve Howe. I can't remember the I other know. two guys. I can't. Oh, but they were, yeah, definitely Richie. Yeah. Richie, somebody was it? Richie. Hmm, I don't know. Oh, you could be right. <clears throat> so this mini PC is powered by a Ryzen seven seventy eight forty HS. That's not the flagship mobile part, but it's a good one. And mm-hmm. it's not quite four by four. It's six and a half inches rectangular yeah this one's a bit thicker than the previous ones have been only for it, obvious reasons it's it's not quite even two inches high it's only one yeah but the previous ones high. were like one 1.2 1. 1. 1.3 at most oh, okay yeah so it's a bit beefier hopefully that means the cpu has plenty of room because uh it looks like it's 96 watts under full load and that's the adjustable one of course you can toggle toggle that down but i mean 45 to 46 and a half dbas is not bad and it's not like they saw throttling because this thing just kicked the snot out of the competition. Let's see some of that uh, performance. Looks uh, very much like an Intel product from second. here. Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's like a wider <laughs> Intel NUC. Uh, yeah, I mean, you've, it's, it's got uh, a USB-C th- uh, 4 Thunderbolt 3 port, two 2.5 gigabyte LAN ports. So, I mean, come on. Like, you've got just about everything you could want. And... One of the things that they do that NUC doesn't do is uh, there's a clear CMOS battery on the outside of it. Oh. If you are uh, really, really uh, playing with this thing. Or if it, you're watching, you know, th- this one's for you. Yeah. Those lean more towards the kind of the appliance use case whenever I see those reset buttons on the yeah, outside. Yeah, because you doink, just reset mm-hmm. it, and away you go again. Mm-hmm. Look at the voltage of this thing. This looks oh, like yeah. it's under load, but 1.481 volts in on a mobile part, it's pretty high. That's high. Mm-hmm. But that's what you get. Yeah, that look, at, if you're compiling the Linux kernel, <laughs> it is faster than every other processor on this chart. And they're not testing every yeah. desktop part, but there's lower power stuff like the 12900, 12700. It's faster than those desktop mm-hmm. parts. It's fast. And you probably got better heat management. The desktop parts are going to be upset and something about that size. Mm-hmm. But 7-zip, I mean, yeah. not quite as impressive, but again... It's very close. It's... And here we are at OpenSSL. Blows it away. The crucial SSD that's in it is very good. Over 5,000 yep. megabytes per second reads, 3,600 writes, Gen 4 drive. A word and on the RDNA 3 GPU. Hmm. So the 780 yeah, M. Hmm. <clears throat> I don't know why they're using Geekbench for this, but I guess they don't really do gaming benchmarks yeah, at STH. It serves at home. 
Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I mean it's uh, it's actively cooled, so that's going to turn off some people. But it's an it's an AMD mini PC. They have to be. Uh, sorry to say, I mean you're you're not dealing with something yeah. that's sipping fifteen or yeah, but like they said, thirty four dBA. That's so tiny above room, just ambient noise. You're really not going to hear it. And I just dumped a link in there that I hadn't uh, posted, but in okay. the show notes where there's an upgrade kit you can buy for it, sort of. Okay. Let me pull that up. They've got a, 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 bo- a bottom plate, the bottom plate where the, they've actually cut a hole out for where the fan is. Oh, okay. That should help. Hmm. Gee, so why wouldn't they include that? That just seems like a... I don't know, but they're saying like uh, the three to four Celsius drop in temps, which well, makes perfect sense. It will add thickness. So if, if you really care about your mini PC being yeah. as slim as possible, mm-hmm. it's like the, the Apple yeah, approach. That's... Make it thermally mm-hmm. not marginal and then have third parties like OWC offer you like a, a pad to put under it that actually adds things like <laughs> I.O. and, you know room to breathe you know that's just that's just uh, yeah. uh leaving room for the third parties to step in and finish yeah. the job yeah like themselves third, third parties like themselves who sell the accessory that should have been part of the original yes. design in the first place interesting interesting turnabout mm. Mm. that's turnabout why you is, can't uh, find a laptop and uh display from the same company and have them work without an adapter are you ready to Del. talk about future amd RDNA 3 graphics products. Ooh. It's a rumor. It, this is a good well, one. It is a rumor, but supposedly leaked 3D Mark numbers suggest that AMD's next graphics card should undercut the RTX 4070 and outperform it. Now, how do you get undercut, as in price, from some leaked benchmarks? You're in for well, the benchmark. Who is this? Is this the benchmark this, numbers this are pretty good. The well, right, but how are you going to say it good. undercuts it in price? I mean, they don't know because that hyperbole, quite yet. Because damn it. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Man, that PC and, Gamer you know, has a lot of pop-ups, whoo, doesn't it? That, and we're all just wishing, you know, just uh, yeah. somebody needs to come out swinging. Okay, so um, a GPU it. score of nearly 19,000 mm-hmm. in 3D Mark Time Spy. That's very good. This is supposedly the RX 7800. How much VRAM should this have? They're saying 16, which makes sense if it's a successor to the 6800. Mm-hmm. Mm. And uh, presumably lower power draw. Price question mark. But I thought you just said it's it under the price. Cut. It's the price. The magic uh, is sourcing in the this price. From uh, ML or M I L D is the source. So you know it could be right. It could be wrong. He's hit or miss. It might be crazy. M I L D is that more is long dead. So a uh, so a five hundred so five hundred fifty dollar price point here. Would be very, very excellent. I mean, we could we can pontificate oh, about what price it could be or should be, but right should now we be. have a benchmark which looks good, and it's all about the price. So isn't a uh, seventy nine hundred XT hitting around seven hundred dollars now? Mm-hmm. It can. So you got to think more. it's it's got to be six hundred for the top RX seventy eight hundred, right? That hurts, but not as much as it used to. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's much better than 8 or 870. It is. I want to see them come out at 699 and beat the 4080 and start this competition up. Let's get... That would be, be nice. be a lot more exciting yeah. generation if we're like, hey, you know how you used to sell 80 series cards for 699? Well, here's ours. Why don't we just... Why don't we just compare this to the um, to the sixteen gigabyte forty sixty Ti? That, oh, sorry. I yeah, I was I was going to lead off with that. Uh, I <laughs> forgot because we don't have any links or anything because there are no reviews. You yeah, this isn't nice. Why don't we just uh, compare it to all the new reviews? I'm just trying to figure out where the big deal in that is because they already outperform the forty seventy at a lower price because you can get a sixty nine fifty XT for five ninety nine. Yeah, they're, they're going to be running out of those. Soon. They're they're clearancing those out. Yeah, yeah. When seventy-eight. We when they finally that. have that seventy-eight hundred on the market, that will officially replace it and hopefully outperform it. But I don't think it's going to be cheaper than the sixty-nine fifty is selling for right now. We can hope. 
they they raised their prices this generation too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, when they don't have that filthy AI lucre to prop them up like Nvidia does. Clearly, that's not entering into the <laughs> equation at all for Nvidia with pricing these. If if this was just some side thing, just you know, to have their name out there and foster goodwill, they could sell them for nothing, and they're making so much on AI that it would be a drop in the bucket. But mm. that they're they're charging more than we ever imagined they would for graphics cards yeah. for the performance <clears throat> level that they offer and the amount of VRAM that they have. And well, so yeah, far, because you're taking up valuable line space that they could be using for AI yes, product, yeah, but no, you damn, right. damn gamers keep demanding GPUs. Yeah. With 16 gigabytes of RAM, because anything else At just least. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I think 12 is the new minimum. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Or people get very unhappy. Yeah, yeah. Well, someone's going to make uh, someone's going to be upset by that, Sebastian. Yeah. So anyway, well, yeah. The, the story year. is that there is no story. <laughs> there were no forty sixty Ti sixteen gigabyte reviews. It was not sampled by Nvidia or any of Nvidia's partners. Yeah. You know it's a really bad card when they're out for tear. Try one of our it's competitors' fun. cards. <laughs> Test this out. <laughs> All right. Let's move on. I guess MSI did a live stream. Yeah. And that's they not, were showing off. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a couple of frames slower than the regular 4060 Ti 8 gig. And that kind of makes Ooh. sense, especially if the memory controller is, you know, kind of optimized for 8 mm-hmm. gig and they threw on 16, then you could have some interesting little issues but yeah i mean that's something that probably can be fixed in firmware updated drivers but yeah it's it looks like it's it's at the same if not a little slower even in stuff like hogwarts legacy it was not showing huge improvements so i don't know mm-hmm. no wonder mm-hmm Our next story, ADA64, a new version is here. That's not that exciting, but what is exciting is that it offers preliminary support for AMD Zen 5. It makes it feel like it's coming soon. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a little bit on the motherboards too, apparently, which we haven't seen yet. So if you can fool ADA into reporting that, uh, you should be able to uh, learn some interesting things. The other one that they added, um, which is interesting, was uh, that uh, Chinese processor. Where, why can't I find it? the the, the Zowin's Young Feng? So they can actually now handle that, give you all the proper information about it, do you do benchmarks on it, and that sort of thing, which is kind of interesting. I mean, oh, so now it's not being shown as an Intel Core i3; it's being shown exactly with its, you know, assumed name. Okay. Yes, and they're still working on that enhanced Smart Cool LCD thing, which I think makes sense because yeah, if you leave Aida running, you can feed it a whole bunch of information if you like to watch your system in real time yeah you know a company that has offered products to let you watch information about your system in real time is corsair Mm -hmm. they have uh made a bold move in the industry they have purchased drop formerly Mm -hmm. mass drop it's now just part of corsair they got it all they're not going to change the name and apparently they bought it in entirety yes so it's not just we want the name it's like no literally you are all ours now and even the even the audio stuff apparently the the special yeah. versions of headphones and and if you've got a drop product don't worry the whole thing is uh you know still covered the warranty and service requests you're still dealing with drop you so you, you don't have to go through the corsair and then the drop team and then that and the other thing but we'll see how they integrate but i mean in something like one of the thoughts i had was like elgato which corsair bought a while back you could get mm-hmm. really fancy keys for them now or at least eventually they start uh, integrating, which could be a little bit of fun. So we'll see how that goes. Do you know who else bought something? What'd you buy? Logitech bought Blue oh. Deck. Yeah, True. they did. Yes. They announced that today. So um, they are getting into that whole thing with Elgato and Corsair mm-hmm. and... And they got their their own, so hopefully uh, software will improve because uh, there have been some complaints about it. But hardware wise, are you ever going to do a review? It's a of neat it? design. What's that? Are you ever going to do a review of it? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just got it pretty recently. Oh, just, okay. 
It sits oh. back in line behind a uh, wheel and this thing. Ah, yes. The fancier one of the one I got. It seems like a good acquisition for uh, Logitech. Seems like a natural play. Yep. Yep. In our next story, this comes from the register. Linux has nearly half of the desktop OS Linux market. Huh? Yes. Yeah, uh, that's Linux a really bizarre wrong. sentence. <laughs> it's true, though, for a lot of people. Because the vast majority of it is Chrome OS, which is the wrong Linux, apparently. So it doesn't count for the purists. So the overall computer market, 3.08% is proper Linux. And 4.15%, or otherwise known as more than the other, uh, is Chrome OS. <laughs> but apparently that it's just, you know... It doesn't count for some reason. My my and favorite just, quote from this article, Jeremy, is is literally, it is 100% on brand for the Linux world that when one specific <laughs> form of Linux-based OS goes mainstream and it is used by approximately half the human race, that would be Android, by the way, yeah. the true believers, capital it T, capital doesn't T, doesn't count anymore. Of, of Linux would disown it. <laughs> yep. Crab bucket. You know the crab bucket? Yeah, this is how it is. So it is. Every time a crab tries to crawl out, no, nope, the rest of them drag them back in, and <laughs> right, to see, we're just we won't allow you to succeed. <laughs> the second you do well, no, nope, we disown you. But the oh, same thing it. happens. It's like it's like fratricide inside the Linux community as well. The Ubuntu's, the CentOS's, you know, the Red Hats. They're all mm -hmm. you know Slack, Slackware, and an Arch. They're all yeah different. You know, this isn't real. That's better. This is worse. And that's one of the reasons why Linux, unfortunately, will never rise to the position it probably could. Because they will never let anyone rise. Drag them back down. That would be the crab. <laughs> yep. Speaking of things that will never rise and will always be dragged down. Ars <laughs> Technica is reporting uh, about Mac OS on Intel. Pro Remember those Intel powered Max they used for a while. It was in between Power PC and then the ultimate power in the universe, the Apple Silicon. Well, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. There was only it was ever weird Apple for Silicon. a while. They had Intel processors in them. You know, they have just put the second M Power Stone into their glove. You realize that, right? But anyway, keep going. How long will the last Intel Max be supported? Mac OS well, Sonoma gives us some hints. <laughs> the TLDR of this is the slightly older Max have a have in linear time a slightly longer run of macOS updates and revisions. And then what they usually do is they have about six to seven years of, of updates and then a couple of years of kind of security and only Safari type updates. But some of the newer ones that have come out, they're seeing sort of falling off in the six-ish time frame rather than the seven or eight year time frame, and then two years of support on top of those. So some of the newest ones that have come out will probably have some of the shortest support runs for new OS updates. You could probably see Mac OS 15, 16, maybe 17 being some of the last OSs ever to be released on Intel. But surprisingly, one of the reasons that if, when digging a little bit deeper into the data is Intel itself because they retire firmware support and such for their chips after about six years. So that's actually one of the drivers behind this. It just turns out to be, there's just no point in Apple trying to support it. Although they're entirely inclined to you know, not support these anyway, just to move everybody to the M, planned obsolescence and all that. Apple would never do such a thing. Well, of course they are. Never. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I'm looking at this, and all the data seems to be up through 2017. They're looking at the past, mm -hmm. extrapolating, and deciding what the future will be. 2027. Well, I mean, the data they're showing only runs oh. through 2017. Yeah. If I don't care about what they're prologue. assuming. I'm, I care about past past just 1998 to 2017. Yeah. And they're just extrapolating. Well, based on that, well, they're also saying that they've established that late model Intel Macs are receiving fewer updates than older That's Intel Macs did. Exactly it. And now yes. that they're fully on... Intel uh, is gone, and they're fully on Apple Silicon on, across every Mac, including the Mac Pro. Mm -hmm. What is their incentive within the company to keep supporting the Intel systems when they want you to buy the Apple Silicon because systems? They're a hardware they company. Sold, 
a lot of them up until like last week. They were, so throw them away. Buy them. the new one. So throw them away. Uh, yep. You saw how I much Tim Cook too. was charging you for a, a Core i5 Mac Mini. It was like True. $900. I know I, I I'm the one that picked that as an anti pick once, well, but the point, but that's, that's a tough pill. That's a tough pill to swallow, even for the Apple faithful. Mm, so no. you should, oh, you'll see a rapid drink, tail off. Drink the I lemonade, agree. the Kool Aid. Let's move on to Security Corner. Uh, Black Lotus is uh it's available. The source code, you can get it. Is that bad? Yeah. Why? It's open because source, right? There's, there's nothing yeah. new. That we've learned about it the the source code that went up on github is literally just everything that security researchers had already uh backwards uh determined figured it out what's going on and these are the invisible bootloaders that uh jump onto uh the fei on your hard drive and literally they, they load long before anything does and avoid secure boot and tpm because you know those were going to save us and Surprise, they didn't. What this does mean is that people who don't want to fork over a bunch of money uh, on a virus site can now start with a seriously robust platform and then just slap on some add-ons because that's it's a sort of a modular virus in that you can... All of this part does is make sure that it gets in. It doesn't do the executables. It doesn't do any of the key logging or the stealing. You add those on. And so if you've got sort of that, but you haven't got the whole Black Lotus thing, well, now you can grab it from GitHub. So it, it just sort of makes it easier for people that just don't have the, the, the programming chops to at least give a shot at uh, getting in on your stuff. So yeah, absolutely wonderful. And Microsoft is still working on the patch for it, but at this point, essentially, you're re-imaging the machine. I mean, Josh did that in 30 seconds, so, I mean, how hard could it be? I mean, yeah, with the proper NVMe 5 drive, it doesn't matter anymore. So, yeah. There's Windows. Oh, wait, i got to wait for the updates. In another depressing story, HCA Healthcare has admitted that they had a massive data breach. Kent, you wrote about this. Uh, how bad I mean, is it? How- how, how many people uh, could this? How many people could this possibly affect? Eleven million, at least. Oh. Huh? Oh, so not yeah. many. Okay. No, not not many. Um, and the the data that uh, HCA has admitted has uh, gotten free on the dark web is um, your full name, your date of birth, uh, you know, when your last appointment and where it was took place when your next appointment is, uh, your Jeez, phone number, at all. your phone number, your address. Um, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's bad. It's really bad. Um, <laughs> they discovered this on that. There had been a breach on the 5th of July and, uh, by the 11th, uh, millions of people around the United States were getting, uh, emails saying, um, Basically, yeah, we uh, we let hackers have everything, and except for your clinical healthcare notes. Apparently, they they didn't get any of those. Um, but um, yeah, uh, so, and w- what's really bad about this, in my mind, is you know a lot of the people that have information with hospital and hospital systems are generally older people. And they're the ones who are more vulnerable to phone and email scams because they don't mm-hmm. know about them. Um, you know, my wife's father called her Monday night uh, and said, hey, I got this email. Uh, what does it mean and what do I need to do? And we basically sat there and explained, OK, if somebody calls you and says they're from your hospital, you know, try and verify it any way you can get their number and call them back is probably the best thing. Um, yeah, it's, it's, so it's, it's targeting a really vulnerable population, uh, which is, uh, really the worst part about it. But, um, yeah, but at least HCA is offering all those people, um, free credit checking. Oh, 
which is oh, which no. is why they're now involved in at least four class action lawsuits. Hmm. Well, that'll fix it. Yeah, we just had something up here with my healthcare provider through work. And so, yeah, I've got like a year long subscription to a, a credit service now that just monitors, you know, what's going on online with what, what I've got, because mostly about similar. I don't think there was any, it was the actual insurance provider. So there wasn't uh, clinical dates or anything like that, but yeah, name and phone number and uh, various other completely useless uh, pieces of personal information were leaked out. Joy. Hmm. At least you have the monitoring to let you know when somebody's opened up yeah. a new account in your well, game. It was, it was the least they could do. Yes. Yeah. I, I like the peace of mind of knowing, like in the middle of the night, I'll get an alert that <laughs> my identity is being used for something. So I just someone, can't wait to get signed up for the next up DVD of the Month Club. Account. <laughs> yeah. It, so my wife also received one of those emails. Um, and today, as we were coming in the house, her phone dinged that she had gotten an email and she looked and she said, Harbor Freight, thank you, and deleted it. And I was like, no, 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 no. Let's look at that. <laughs> and, and let's look at that first because we haven't ordered anything from Harbor Freight. So, and apparently she's on a Harbor Freight mailing list. But anyway, so it, it was at least cool. But yeah, it, you, you got to look at this stuff now. You need an assistant. Everybody needs an assistant now, but then who can you trust? Because they could just be scamming you too. That's why you need an electronics assistant. Yeah, AI. AI will fix everything. Mm -hmm. New critical Citrix ADC and gateway flaw exploited as zero day. But, uh, yep. you know, if you're using Citrix, you are using this. And they gave it a 9.8 out of 10. Because it's it's remote code execution once again uh, without any authentication, and if you use Citrix, this seems weird because you you'd think that uh, the amount of stuff that you have to do to verify your stuff on a Citrix connection, how are they getting through? But yeah, so that they're leveraging uh, the VPN virtual servers or the proxies, so pretty much exactly what you're using a Citrix appliance for. And yeah, it's a, a true zero day. If you upgrade to the brand new product, you'll be safe. But a bunch of the 12.1s, uh, which are very popular, have hit end of life. So they're not pushing out patches for it. They, they won't. It's, it's end of life. You're, they're literally saying, hey, if you're using one of those net scalers from that long ago, you should toss it out and we'll sell you a new one because you should trust us totally. We're very, it's just one of those technological downsides of, Hey, I have this device or this system or this infrastructure or this feature that's working fine. It meets my needs. Um, I don't need anything more. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, it's been great. Uh, all my users are happy with it, but the company that manufactures it or supplies patches to it, we don't support that anymore. We'd like you to spend X amount of your, uh, you know, your discretionary funds on upgrading and installing and debugging our next new and greatest thing, making everybody unhappy for a period of time with maybe features that don't work or stuff that goes away. You know, I'm, I'm speaking to the choir here. Everybody knows how this is, the, how upgrades actually work. Uh, so it's a real pain in the ass and it's a technological leapfrog that we can't get off of. And we're going to be continuing to pay the technological debt price on this stuff forever, really, unfortunately. That you can't just remain happy with a piece of technology, whether it's uh, your version of Mac OS or your Netscaler device, you'll have to move on. Well, it, I mean, it's just the eternal enroachment of the Internet of shit spreading <laughs> through everything. It's even to this point now, firewall devices are being treated as, yeah, no, whatever. Yeah, it, it, you depend on it for security, but we're just not going to bother anymore. You're going to have to buy a new one. And presenting that cost to the as a like a business case for that cost is not easy because well this works good enough and you they want how much for the new one? It's like well, but you no, know, there's some serious problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very frustrating. 
It's the Steve Jobs vision of the future realized. He wanted things to have no expansion, to have sealed True. cabinets, to be just appliances. The computer is an appliance, and now we have that. Appliance-like devices. And that, appliances are computers. Unfortunately. They yeah, are indeed. The, yeah. Okay. Let's move on to gaming quick hits. And yet another story about Microsoft and Activision, which, of course, is actually on now. and But it's been delayed. According to their financial results, people have been sourcing this. It says, merger agreement with Microsoft extended, that's a nice way of putting that, to October 18, 2023, in return for higher termination fee, new commercial arrangements. So, interesting. I mean, can it make it? any worse i don't know we've we've only got the brits to 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 put the hammer down if they decide yep. to do so to to stop this because the u.s yep. uh what fec yeah and they were all like fine no i see no yep. competition issues here yeah and uh, uh the well the problem is that the brits are busy because they're going after microsoft for bundling teams into office now and they succeeded last time with internet explorer so we'll see how that goes well, they could claim that Internet Explorer was integral to the operating system, which... No, they had to remove it. It didn't work, yeah. I don't... I feel like Teams, though, they probably have a better argument because Teams is just how people work now, sadly. Yeah. Unless they use Zoom or one of the well, 87 yeah. other options that you've got out there. There's some organizations that just don't want to do that. They want to stay with... Yes, you know, because then I can only have to support one of them. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got the I'm Amazon one. Okay, you've got. No, oh, sorry. Yeah. No, I'm still trying to figure out how what they're doing. Microsoft is doing with Edge now is any different than what they did with Explorer 25 years ago that got them into trouble. Because uh, actually, getting rid of Edge is. Yeah, they go ahead. stole it from someone else. That's the only difference, is that they stole it from someone else as opposed to doing it in-house. Because <laughs> it is still a Chrome skin. I don't care what you yes. say. Next, uh, Jagged Alliance 3 is the third time the charm. Yeah, speaking of sequels that never happened, uh, mm -hmm. there have been two Jagged Alliance games. There was Jagged Alliance, Jagged Alliance 2, and then there was the add-on to Jagged Alliance 2. Then there were a bunch of games that stole the name and were just either borderline awful to complete garbage. So this one they've come up with, and they're, they're going back to sort of the original, so you're not going to get any of the XCOM style. You've got two action points. You can move and you can shoot. Uh, based on the stats that your Merc has, you will have a certain amount of action points you can use. And they came up with a very interesting way of getting rid of the whole frustration of you've got a 90% chance to hit the alien that is literally being rendered with your gun in its mouth and you miss. They don't show you hit percentages, period. There are none. You have to sort of eyeball it and decide whether or not you can probably make that shot. You can spend extra turn point or action points to aim better, but uh, you, you won't have the frustration of the game telling you, oh, you've got a 99% chance to hit and watch the bullet sort of soar over into left field somewhere. Uh, I haven't had a chance to try it. Uh, being financially uh, slapped by a bunch of dying appliances right now. Uh, but I really want to because the original were my favorite. Like, this is a serious simulator. And they're trying to go back to that. It's going to be interesting. Uh, Rock, Paper, Shotgun didn't particularly like some of the voice acting, uh, which, to be fair, is honest for that series, that you've got a couple of guys that just make really annoying comments, and, hey, you don't have to take that, Mark. You can take a different one. So I'm hoping to try this out sometime, and I'm really hoping not to be utterly and completely disappointed, as I have been since Unfinished Business. Let's move to another story. One of the biggest upgrades to texture load times in years just debuted in a free portal mod. And there's a number of things that are in this portal mod, but one of the most interesting ones is, I think, is they're advertising it as the first significant use of RTX IO 
which yes. is a a decompression method for textures, which unfortunately, just due to the way compression works, is expensive. Usually uh, for both compression and decompression, it's very tough to get that asymmetric. Um, they, they try as much as they can. But they have um, this algorithm that runs very, very uh, well inside uh, NVIDIA's uh, GPUs. It is This algorithm is being ported or is in the process of being ported to other GPU architectures. But it is this particular mod works uh, extremely well with NVIDIA's uh, GPUs. Uh, 2060 on up. Um, and this is like a, th- a 3x or 10x speed improvement for textures and high quality rendering. <laughs> and there's a number of other things that come with this particular portal mod. If you like this sort of thing, new levels, new voiceovers, new sentences, just it's an it's kind of an overall enhancement to the <laughs> original portal game. Um, but the standout technological piece is the support of RTX IO. G deflate. That's what the algorithm is called. I couldn't remember it. And how happy is NVIDIA that it was a, f- a modder that screwed around with Portal, created a prequel to it, and that's the only game that actually supports it? Yeah, it's it's so, but it it really demonstrates that it could be a very effective technique. And again, yes. GD Flight, I think, was put out there as source. So the other like Intel and AMD are also eventually going to be supporting GD Flight as well, I think, as an algorithm direct direct run also. What if NVIDIA gets a win with this and more and more games end up supporting RTX IO rather than direct storage? Yeah, I was going to say. In- interesting. Yeah. This lists uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, which is the first major game expected to support GPU compression via direct storage 1.2. But if they're, yeah, I don't know. If NVIDIA partners with some developers and it just becomes something that's easier to implement for them or they have an incentive to implement it, maybe direct storage will just be an also ran. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't know. You just need an SSD. Where is it? You just just need a quick, reasonably quick storage and this GD Flate algorithm and you're going to really embrace some of the benefits of fast texture rendering. It's like Alan was saying, you don't need the fastest storage in the world. There are bottlenecks in the chain. You only need about 4,000 megabytes a second consistently, and you can do that with a number of Gen 4 drives, and theoretically, Mm -hmm. if a game was actually implementing direct storage, it would take care of so many of the issues that we have these days with if only they would implement it in the rage engine <laughs> oh god pop pop this is a killer pop. app for mega textures <laughs> oh god oh that was game was just something else i can't believe they made a second one it was so efficient though ran on everything yeah yeah there was a, a comment in the uh, YouTube chat about um, it being unusually slow or this technique potentially being unusually slow on non-NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, it's, re- it's definitely reported that both Intel and AMD will also support GPU decompression through the GDeflate algorithm. So it's just a, a matter of them being able to plug that into their uh, drivers and whatever game engine is running has to recognize that it's available in the driver and it, hopefully all of the GPUs will be able to support this. Well, it's just bit banging, so it should than- be should be fast. Yeah. You want them to, to AMD and Intel to develop that faster than uh, NVIDIA can develop the bottlenecks to insert back <laughs> into it. Absolutely. <laughs> they'll have dedicated hardware for it. They'll, they'll be something yeah. in the architecture. Oh, the Maybe. physics processor is coming back? Except physics. the decompressor? Uh-huh. You never know. Xenonauts 2, Strategic Planetary Defense Simulator. Oh finally out after many many years i backed this way back in the day and i wanted to mention it because there are some people out there that are masochists like myself that really love the original XCOM. you know the one where it's everything's destroyable you've got to deal with the fact that the very first mission the aliens are probably going to kill half your team before you even spot one it's it's just a very nasty nasty game and 
you're you're going to be you know probably selling uh, alien technology to street kids so that they can go out and shoot people. But hey, you need the money to save Earth, so who's going to argue? It's yeah, the, and if anyone played the first one, then yeah. The, so this is the same team that designed that one. They've just expanded it a huge amount. But if you just haven't had enough of the the psychic alien that can actually physically get inside of a piece of stone and so you can't shoot it until you bring out the really big heavy guns to destroy enough of the terrain that you can actually shoot at the alien that's insubstantial inside the terrain which has been busily taking over all of your shoulder soldiers minds you know if you like that sort of thing give this one a look it's not even that expensive how high does this drive your frustration level does it give you uh, percent to hit chance? Does it does it give you a percentage to hit? I it didn't the last time I played it, but I haven't actually had time to fire it up since. Hmm. It's more just yeah, you you hope, and if they do, it's never going to be a ninety percent chance to hit. Let me tell you. But yeah, they wonderful memories of like the the Martian base where you've got the uh, self guided football explosion, and so once you finally spot the actual target that you're trying to take out you've got a literal uh cannon that is self-guided missile so you walk it through the path of the giant maze to be able to hit the thing that someone spotted way over on the other side of the map but that's after you've already researched all the aliens technology and dealt with them so yeah if you like that sort of stuff check out this one chat just asked but no one review corner which will be really quick Diablo 4, but I think we talked about Diablo 4 a week or so ago, actually. Well, yeah, and everyone's upset that they nerfed it with Season 1. Hmm. Hmm. Except Josh, maybe. Yeah, I, I still haven't uh, finished up the main quest, so... Oh, well. Let's move to Picks of the Week. Josh, please get us started. So my wife came home and she's like, why is my son so upset? And I said, I don't know. He seemed hungry, so I fed him some beaver nuggets. And she yelled at me for the next five minutes about how gross and inappropriate that is. And and then so I actually pulled out the bag of beaver nuggets. And if you've never been to Bucky's, you actually need to buy some beaver nuggets because they're really, really tasty. They're corn puffs, sweet and salty and they're a little pricey. I mean, they're cheaper if you actually go to Bucky's, but for getting it through Amazon, it's uh it's a deal. You'll to go through them. Get some beaver nuggets. Hmm. And their math checks out too. Yeah. <coughs> Who is this on Amazon selling this? <laughs> Seller Depot USA. So they just, just go to their local Bucky's. I, I think it's just people who go into yeah. Bucky's and buy Bucky's. it directly there and they charge you some more extra dollars and shipping. Because they're like six Seems bucks a bag at business. Bucky's. Yeah. America, yeah. what a country. Yeah. Hey, Bucky's, it's the <laughs> truck stop with a cult following. Find one on a highway near you. Except, you want to know something about Bucky's? They don't yes. allow 18 wheelers. Really? That's it's not a truck stop. Come they on. do not allow 18 wheelers. They think that uh, the quality of their experience would go down dramatically with that particular clientele. That's and true. it makes truckers mad. I, yeah. Flood. yeah. Mad Hatter. Speaking of mad, Mad Hatter 2561. It's not a truck stop. There you go. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I've enjoyed many a meal at Hardee's, you know, over the my childhood on the highway, but. I guess that's not a truck stop either. Sorry. Truck stops are just like big gas stations with diesel. Stuff. Yeah. And idling trucks out back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, nope, some they don't people wandering around. Oh, you miss, you mispronounced lot. You mispronounced lot lizard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll, we'll move on from that and the things that happen <laughs> yeah, just in the, cut, cut the that backs part out. of cabs for 20 bucks later. Jeremy, do you have okay. a pick this week? No. Okay, good. Uh, Brett. Um, Wait. Ah, Jeremy has has a pick. pick. He has a pick. So PlexAmp is something that you used to have to pay for. Uh, They decided to make it free. And it's obviously a mix of Plex and WinAmp in that if you've got a Plex server and you upload music files to it, 
This just grabs the music files. So it's not like the Plex on your, the, the actual Plex app on your phone where you've got movies and shows and yada, yada, yada. All this does is grab whatever you've thrown in the music folder. And apparently, uh, and I I've still need to play with it a little bit more, will instead of forcing you to make playlists, we'll use AI to mm. uh, build your own playlist based on album types or uh, the various singers in it. So, I mean, I, I hate making playlists. I'm one of those guys that just throws things on random. If I don't like it, I just skip the track and away I go. But yeah, the idea that it'll sort of build one and it's also tied into title. So if you've got a title account, it will also pull everything down from there as well. So it's, it just sort of struck me as an interesting idea. And it's, you know, more of Plex sort of taking over every marketplace, which good for him. And it makes me think that I really need to start building that Plex server so I can dump a bunch of my music on it. Hmm. I love the idea of the AI behind that, but I believe it's paywalled. I believe the AI action is four ninety nine a month. Uh, it, it gave me... Uh, the buttons. Ooh. Well, the first I hit is the free, buttons, right? Or, yeah, well, that's yeah. probably Enjoying the thing. this playlist? <laughs> Put in your Enjoying this playlist? Exactly. I've actually been using PlexAmp uh, for a couple of years now. And originally, the interface was awful, but it's they've improved it a lot. Um, and it's uh, I use it every day, basically. Um, it's great just to you know, let my phone pull music from my server as I'm driving to and from work or as I'm sitting at work and want to hear some music when there's no clients around. So, yeah, it's great for that. I don't have to load a bunch of music onto my phone. I just pull it from the server. It's fantastic. What quality level does it support? Or is it just whatever you put on it? Up through FLAC. Oh, nice. Okay, I should be using this. Is it compatible with your Mercedes Benz uh, <laughs> entertainment? Bluetooth? <laughs> Why, yes, it is. Bluetooth? Oh, oh wait a minute. Bluetooth? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, whoa. I would have figured it would be like Bluetooth. I thought you had to turn on your Mercedes first to yeah. get Bluetooth to connect. Well, I thought well to Mercedes turn on a Mercedes, really you've just got Bluetooth. to speak directly to it. But mm -hmm. In German. Uh, in German. Of course. Good card. It's like in, you know, the movie Firefox with Clint Eastwood from like 1982. Yep. Oh my you gosh, you did it yourself again. You had to think in, in Russian, Russian to fly the plane. Yep. Right. He well, was trying to fire missiles. The, the true Mercedes experience. You unlock uh, things think about, about your car you never even knew existed if you can think in German. So, you can no, the, swear the, at the it entertainment German. system in my Mercedes will not directly use Plex Amp, but I can feed no. uh, my phone's feed from PlexAmp into the car via Bluetooth. Yes, obviously. Um, but that degrades the audio significantly, so why would you do that? Oh, there you go. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Anyway. I want to take my stereo it's, separation it's... down to vinyl levels. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry, vinyl enthusiasts, but the best cartridges. And I have a very good one. I have a Microline Stylus cartridge that was like 280 bucks, And you don't need to spend more than that, honestly. Uh, it has about 30 dB channel separation at best. And a CD is what, like 120? I mean, it's just you have a left and a right channel. It's digital. Digital music. Does is... that have the moon rock quartz needle? No, it's a microline. It's just an <laughs> elliptical diamond stylus that's been shaved further, so it's even narrower and sits further down in the groove. Ooh. So it's more of a landing strip? Okay. I'm not biting. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. You did it anyway. You did it anyway. <laughs> I mean, there's, yeah, there's at least something to bite if there's a landing strip. Okay. Um, okay. Brett. Bucky's. Bucky's. Yeah, Bucky's. Oh, uh, I've been a really big proponent for a long time of, of upping your network game and moving to at least 2.5G because it's just becoming so inexpensive to pick up these switches, add on network cards, and with so many motherboards now coming with multiple or at least single 2.5Gs, and even uh, these small appliances like uh, the AMD Zen 4 uh, Nook-like box that we looked at earlier, multiple 2.5G interfaces. It's time to step up to 2.5G, except what about that backbone inside your house or your or your uh, work or wherever it is that you're putting in networking? 
if you've got multiple 2.5G devices on whatever room that you've put a switch in, your backbone is going to get clogged up. You need to move to 10G in your backbone. Have I got a deal for you? This TrendNet 6 port 10G switch with two 10G interfaces, not SFP plus, mind you, Ooh. direct, yeah. direct, direct uh, uh, 6A or 7, if you really want to spend, okay. and f- a four port 2.5G. Now, four it is fanless. times it is four times four you'll note or four times 2.5 you note is you know 10g so you can get full yeah. and it'll do 100 uh it'll do i think what was it uh i think 10g or su- such switching internally but anyway this is uh, quite a deal for under 200 dollars. you're getting two 10g uh regular normal ports with a four port uh 2.5 switch uh it's all RG45. It's looks like quite a deal. Take a look at this one. 189 bucks. Was that one of the ones that serve the home did? Because they've been uh, on the vendor sure. doing like the, the 10 gigabit switches that are affordable. Uh, they've been doing a lot of 2.5G switching with 10G ex, um, parallel yeah. ports as as and what I mean by parallel is like in addition to with a, a 2.5G switch. I don't know if they when they reviewed them if this was under 200 bucks or not. But it's and, and this is a Trendnet which is a name brand. A lot of the ones that they took a look at yeah. were AliExpress brands yeah. and um, a little bit more do I trust this thing, you know. And Sebastian's pick will be amazing. I was going to pick it that usually is. $180 A750, and I can't find it now. These are not these are not as cheap as I thought they were. Oh. That's not... I mean, it's the full I mean, price it's still not higher. bad, but... It's full price or higher. Where's the 180 Okay. I have no they problem. were getting down there with Prime Days, but yeah. it's no yeah, longer I Prime Days. Just today, somebody was yeah. tweeting about one for like 180 Huh. Okay, well, I guess that one sold out. Sorry. Okay. Kent, your pick. So, you know, long before I was a member of this podcast or a contributor to PC Per, I, I was a viewer, and um, like many of our viewers, I believed in Alan Malventano. And I still believe in Alan Malventano, and no matter what anyone tells me, I think he runs everything at Solidime, and he's a <laughs> madman because – they are having still having fantastic deals on their drives. This is the uh, P41 Plus 2 terabyte. It's 80 bucks with a $5 off code. 75 bucks oh, for a Gen 4 2 terabyte NVMe drive. A very high quality. It's compatible with their software and uh, just fantastic. Way to go, Alan. I uh, we need T-shirts. I believe in Alan Malventano. <laughs> I believe in Maltavino. <laughs> we miss you, Alan. You're doing a great job, though. Congratulations Super. on all your success. That is crazy cheap, though. Yes, Barco. I believe that I could find a two terabyte thumb drive for significantly more than that. <laughs> Thumb drives just they're not as hot as they used to be. I'm not seeing those really well, awesome no. like the speeds and Man, it's the prices of some of these NVMe drives, it's getting to where you if you need a large thumb drive, just get a uh an NVMe housing and a a, yep. a cable. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But that's but then bad idea. there's the big, you know, the problem with the connectivity and the fact that those, most of those are what, ten gigabit? So you're not going to get amazing transfer speeds. It's still good. That's why you need Thunderbolt or USB 4 or whatever they're calling it right now. Yes. Mm -mm. (laughs) Whatever system you're plugging it into. Well, and there's that too. I think that will do it for this uh, podcast. This high energy podcast. Ooh, 90. Well, it's too hot. I I think it was high energy. I do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and then I think it sort of peaked at the at the Beaver Nuggets moment. I think. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was good. Head to your local Bucky's, pick up some Beaver Nuggets. Don't pay some third party seller on Amazon 
twenty five dollars. Yeah, go direct. Go direct. direct from the source. Go on a road trip, just to go to a Bucky's, off the highway somewhere. Not a truck stop, just a wholesome family establishment that sells tasty treats for the whole family. They have enjoy. a jerky bar. Mm-hmm. A jerky bar. They do jerky. At least eighteen different I, fresh jerkies, not to mention their packaged stuff. And then they <laughs> they do they smoke brisket on premise. Uh, their their pastries, cinnamon rolls, fudges. Yeah, it's 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 an event to go to Bucky's. Don't fool yourself. It's not just some convenience store. It's not some truck stop. 